Beth, Keir Starmer went on, on women's safety and on phones mm -hmm. and the probation mm -hmm. service first, and, and he has sort of often gone on physics questions on one subject, but then he turned it around right towards the end of his subject, didn't he? He, he did. He started on Zara Alina's case, that woman that was murdered uh, by someone that was not picked up by the pro probation service because, as I understand it, what his team was saying was that he wanted to get it on record, that there were failings in the probation service, uh, and what was the government going to do about that to ensure that this terrible crime couldn't happen again? Uh, and the Prime Minister did accept the findings of the report. Uh, he then used that later, though, uh, to broaden that out as well into sort of a competence question in the government. Um, the main parts of the exchange, of course, uh, were around Nadim Zahawi, as we thought it would be, and Keir Starmer there kicking off with a question, an uncomfortable question for the Prime Minister, saying, any politician who seeks to avoid taxes in this country isn't fit to be in charge of taxpayer money. Now, the Prime Minister, as we talked about before Prime Minister's questions, uh, had a clear defence on that, which is, I am following due process. I appointing an independent advisor, I'm following due process, and you, Keir Starmer, are taking political opportunism here uh, because I'm, I'm following a process and we should let that play out. Now, there were a couple of interesting things in this between the lines. The one is um, the distance that the Prime Minister is now putting between him and Nadeem Zahawi. He hid behind the independent inquiry, if you like. He didn't in any way try to defend Nadeem Zahawi in any of those exchanges, which is something that pricked my ears. And indeed, he said it would have been politically expedient of me to get that uh, inquiry uh, resolved before midday on Wednesday, presumably because he could therefore either uh, put the story to bed and sack uh, his chairman or he, the chairman would be exonerated. But there was no sense of trying to defend Nadeem Zahawi. He was now into the, it's a process. That's a very different position from a week ago. The other thing I thought was interesting in terms of Keir Starmer going back to competence is that he reiterated the, this is a weak prime minister who won't sack his chairman, but then he expanded that to say, when you look at the system, the problems in the police system and probation, when you look at the NHS, does the Prime Minister think uh, that this job is too big for him? Well, and that was that a new attack. Actually. Have so we? let's okay. listen to it. I believe in proper due process. <laughs> that's why, that's why I appointed an independent advisor and that's why the independent advisor is doing his job. But the opposition can't have it both ways. The shadow leader, his, also his party chair, both urged me and the government to appoint an independent advisor. And now he objects to that independent advisor doing their job. It's simple political opportunism and everyone can see through it. We all know why the Prime Minister was reluctant to ask his party chair questions about family finances and tax avoidance. Yeah. <laughs> but but he, his, his failure... His failure to sack him, when the whole country can see what's going on, shows how hopelessly weak he is. A Prime Minister overseeing chaos, overwhelmed at every turn. He can't say when ambulances will get to heart attack victims again. He can't say when the prison system will keep streets safe again. He can't even deal with tax avoiders in his own cabinet. Is he starting to wonder if this job is just too big for him? Prime Minister's questions now, isn't it? There's this weakness that, that he perceives in the Prime Minister. A weakness, but he went farther there because there was, you're too weak to take decisions, be that Gavin Williamson, who actually then resigned from government, be that Dominic Raab, another cabinet minister also under investigation, up to eight bullion allegations, or be that now Deem Zahawi. But what was interesting about that was Keir Starmer went further. He said, does it make you think the NHS isn't working, the probation service is not keeping women safe on the streets, are you up to the job? 
and the reason that that is quite, um, might hurt, might prick a bit, is that the whole Rishi Sunak operation and the beginning of the launch of the year and his big speech of the five promises to the public around the economy and small boats and cutting waiting lists is that I'm competent, I have integrity and I'm competent. Now, Keir Starmer keeps going at Rishi Sunak on integrity and what you saw there is now he's beginning to attack him on competence and it makes me wonder what sort of polling is, is Labour seeing and, and is this going to become a more frequent attack line? The, the other thing I quickly say, Jane, as you saw in those exchanges, and I thought Rishi Sunak looked uncomfortable, was that Starmer, and I thought he would do this, use that to bring up the issue of Rishi Sunak's wife, former non-DOM status. She changed her tax status, make that clear, we should make mm. that clear. But you remember he took all of that heat. I mean, you asked him uh, about some of the issues around that yourself. He took all of that heat uh, in the run-up to the leadership contest over that. And then Keir Starmer raising that, saying, maybe you won't want to talk about family tax affairs. So taking another dig at him. And what this all is, is the Prime Minister, these were not his decisions around Nadeem Zahari being appointed Chancellor while there was a tax case. It was Boris Johnson, but he is now having to absorb the fallout of that. But I think there's a second issue for him there, which is it was known in the summer of last year that there were questions around Nadeem Zahari's tax status because newspapers were writing about it. Uh, and Rishi Sunak might not have known the details, but he did appoint him with some of that information in the public domain. So if you were being critical, you might say, why didn't you ask those questions? Whatever the rights and wrongs of what happened, mm -hmm. he now has a political problem on his plate. I mean, the thing to say is that Number 10 do want this dealt with sw swiftly, and you can absolutely see why, because it's not going to go away until it's resolved.